Well, I just praise the Lord that each one of you are here today Amen. and everybody that's listening today. Yes. I just thank you all by the power of Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. This morning, I've been wrestling with this and uh, just cannot get my thoughts together. And so I just, Lord, just have your way with us, oh, have it way with, with me, and that everybody's hearts and my hearts and everything will be tuned to God and to his glory because he is our Savior. He is our only hope that we can go through. Now, today, it starts out the another fall festival mm, yes. and it's the festival of tabernacles mm, yes, Lord. and the Jewish people celebrated for eight days mm -hmm. for eight days and mm -hmm. we see that as Christians we need to celebrate mm -hmm. Jesus every day of our life but sometimes we need to have a focus to know when what the to focus and get our hearts right. Now, this is the Feast of Tabernacles, or it's at the end gathering. And the end gathering is, it was a fall festival that when they were through with their barley or wheat harvest, that this was another time that they brought in, after they did their harvest, they came to thank God. But then God initiated this festival. And it's God's festivals, and it's not a Jewish festival, it's not a Christian festival, it's God's festival that he's called yes. us to yes. participate in. Thank you, Father. So we have to see that it's a celebration of several things. It's a celebration of the harvest, mm -hmm. celebration of rejoicing, and our rest and our relaxation. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand this is the thing that they did, they they had the end time harvest, which that's what we're getting ready to have is the end time harvest. That's the reason why that we labor and we go out to show first fruits. But I want to look just, first of all, I want to look at the Old Testament as it was set up first in Leviticus 23, 29, and I'll go through 39, excuse me, Leviticus 23, 39. Mm -hmm. And we see that, we see that, that in Leviticus 23, 29, it says, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days, and on the first day shall be the Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be the Sabbath. So it's saying you start on the Sabbath and you end on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And then it says that as you gather the fruit of the land, that is the time of the harvest. This is as the end results, as the harvest comes in. Leviticus 23, 40 says, and ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of godly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and shall re rejoice before the Lord. Now, what they were saying that you take these boughs of trees, and actually they did a wave offering at this time, just kind of praising God. But then it says in 41, is that they take these trees, and we'll go on to see how they use them later. Uh, 41, it says, and you'll keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations, and you shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Mm. And then it says in verse 43, 42, it says, Ye shall dwell in the booths for seven days, and all the Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That your generations know, I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I 
brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am their God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Well, what they took these branches and they made altars that they would dwell in. They were, and it's kind of significance there is that they dwelled under these altars that, that it showed God's protection over them. And also showed kind of a foreshadowing of Jesus that he dwells in us. And when we, that he is our covering and he dwells in us, but we also dwell in him, mm -hmm. that he's our protection. And as, as we abide in him, he abides in us. Mm -hmm. As we dwell in him, he dwells in us. And this mm -hmm. is kind of a foreshadowing of what to come. Mm -hmm. um, we have to understand that in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it talks and first of it, asked a question, what? And then you think, that's the signal. What are we talking about? What, 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 what's this all about? It says, know that your body is the temple, is the temple of the Holy Ghost, mm. which is in you, mm. which you have of God, and you are not your own. So we understand that our body, after we come to Christ, that even though Christ made us, we're actually giving our bodies back to him oh, as Lord, a Lord. sanctuary for Lord. him to live in us, Lord. a sanctuary for him to abide in us. So we see that to Corinthians 15.22, it says, that for as Adam all died, even so Christ shall be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, yeah. after they are, are Christ at his coming. Mm -hmm. So what is this saying to us? That there's a harvest comes and we are his first fruits. We are his first fruits. We are his harvest. Mm, we are his harvest you, and we see this that when the end times come and which is the feast of the end gathering or the feast of tabernacles because we abide in him yeah. that we are become that fruit of him mm. so we see that we are part of that harvest that first coming, that in gathering, and the Feast of Tabernacles, there's people said this is the foreshadowing when Jesus will come back for his church. Mm. And he's going to be coming back Lord, for God. you and me and all the Lord, believers. Mm. Because what? We mm. dwell in him. Yeah. And he dwells in us. Lord. They showed in the Old Testament, they built those booths as showing that he was their protection and he was their dwelling place. Mm. But we also see when Christ comes, he dwells in us and we oh. are his dwelling place. Mm. And so he calls us out. Mm. Now, we see here that it says that mm. in Acts 2.26, it says, Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue be glad more over than my flesh rest in hope. So we see that here is the end gathering. And you think about it. When they got through the harvest time, they were probably pretty weary. But they had this relief in the sensation that it's done, mm. that their their work was done and they rejoiced oh. and rejoiced and they rejoiced mm -hmm. in the Lord and became hey, thankful for what he has done for them. And so that's the part of the end gathering and part of the celebration. First of all, it's the end time harvest that you're gathering in 
the fruits of your labor, but then we rejoice for what God has given us and we're thankful for that. So we have to understand that. That it says that in Matthew eleven twenty eight, it says, Come to me, all that ye labor and heavy laden, and I give you rest. So we see that in this celebration that there was a time of harvest, there was time of rejoicing. Well, you know, when we rejoice, how many times have you done something and you worked so hard and all of a sudden, wow, it's over with. And I thank God it's over with. You ever done that? Say, God, no, I've finally finished. You gave me the strength to get through this. Well, that's what he is saying here. Even though you're weary, no matter that the work that you've done, that we see that you that are heavy laden, mm -hmm. that you are, that I will give you rest. So this is a time of relax, to time to rest. Now look in Hebrews 4, 9. In Hebrews 4, 9, it says, and I'll go through 4, 9 through 11. It says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Wow. How many times that we, that we feel like that there's something that we're just tired and we're weary. And, but God says that he has provided for us a rest. He's created a resting place. He's created a resting place. Mm -hmm. And we see that as people of God, he gives us rest. No matter how tired we are or how weary or how much is going on in the world, he is called us to rest. And this is the time of the festivals of tabernacles mm -hmm. that we dwell in him mm -hmm. and he gives us that oh, rest. Yes. He gives that rest that when we're weary and we don't think we can go another step, we rejoice because he gives us that rest. Amen. Then it says, verse 10, Hebrews 4.10, For he that entered into his rest also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. How many times do we get so busy in life that, oh, I've got, I'm, and we wear ourselves out. We accomplish one thing, and we say, oh, no, i got to do this here. And so you do so much and so much, and then you're so wore out, and then you're dead for two or three days. Mm, my, my. Well, he is, says, as you labor, that you come to him and you come into his rest to restore you, to restore you, to be able to go forward. Mm. So we see this, and then verse 11, let us... Labor, therefore, to enter in that rest. Mm -hmm. God has called us for his good works Glory. that he has mm -hmm. in us. Mm -hmm. We're not saved by our works, but because our faith will show us that we will do works. Yes. And so we see this, that we see in this, it says, we labor into his rest unless man fall the example of unbelief. Mm. Sometimes we get to the point into our life that we wear ourselves out in the physical so much wow. that we get so confused in our mind, our bodies hurt, we just so much that mm. we just seem like mm. we're overwhelmed with all that we have done or how much we've done that we get so tired and we get so exhausted mm. that we leave God out of it. Because our physical being is thinking about the angst 
aches and pains that we're having and we're getting off the okay. things of God. We're more concerned in our physical th things or we might be the thing that we, we labor and we say, nobody else is doing anything. Why do I have to do it all? Have you ever been that way? Why am I the only one that works around here? Well, you got to remember Elijah, you know, I mean, he thought he was the only one. And God had to tell him there were 7,000 more that was out there with him. But we have to understand that a lot of times we get this in our body that we we get so busy, and I'll tell you, we even get so busy thinking that we got to do so much for the Lord when the Lord wants to do it through us. Oh, it's not yeah. in our doing. It is his that gives us strength. Amen. He, he says he gives us strength in all things, Praise that God. his strength mm -hmm. will comfort us. His, he gives us strength mm -hmm. to do. But when we rely on our own strength, and we can even do this in the ministry, living as a Christian, <coughs> that we get so driven, so driven that we got to do this thing for the Lord and we do this thing for the Lord. Mm, my, my. But we forget we're not, uh, we're not doing it in our strength. It's in his strength. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. And he'll give us the strength mm -hmm. no matter what we go through. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that sometimes we can be so weary mm -hmm. and so much in our physical beings and our emotional beings that we tend to get to under belief. We start to question God. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And so that's the reason why he says, enter into my rest. That's the reason why he said at the festival that after the harvest, mm -hmm. that you need to thank him and praise him for the harvest. But he says, enter into my rest. That's the reason why he said, again, like I said earlier, come to me, all you live that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Mm, boy, yes. Thank you, Lord. Now, we have talked that Christ dwells in us. Uh, in Deuteronomy 12, 9, mm. it says, hmm, well, let's go back. I want to go back to 7. Deuteronomy 12, 7. And there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all that he put your hand to. And you and you and your household, wherein God has blessed thee. Okay, that goes back to when God has blessed us. We need to learn to rejoice. We need to learn to Amen. thank him for what Amen. he has done. Then verse 8 says, Ye shall not do after all these things that you do here this day, every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. Now we have to be careful that we step out. When he tells us it's time to rest, we need the time to rest. Yes. Sometimes we get it into our mind, this is what we're supposed to do. I have not done enough. Mm, my. That's the reason why we need the direction of the Holy Spirit to say, yes. Lord, take me step by step. Mm -hmm. But see, a lot of times we want to jump ahead of God and we just, we take one step and then jump over another step. And we're out here and we start to run when we're supposed to take one step at a time. Mm. And so we see that sometimes in our eyes that it's a thing that we're looking at ourselves. Well, look what I'm doing. Sometimes we get so driven and I see this in the ministry and people so much, they get so driven that they want to please God that they're actually doing it in their self and the prideful thing in themselves. Mm -hmm. They show, try to show God, look how holy I am. Nah. Or they're trying to convince other people how holy they are. Mm -hmm. 
And so we see, we have to understand we've got to do all things unto the Lord. But we have to watch out not to get so driven. So we'll look at verse 9 now. For ye are not yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord has given you. We get so much involved in what we do that we lose sight of God that wants to take you and say, it's time to rest in me. It's time for you to be restored. It's time. Then it says, he's talking to the Israelite people here. But when you go over to Jordan, dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit. And when he give you rest from all the enemies round about, so then that ye dwell in safety. Now we said earlier, we said earlier, the Feast of Tabernacles, this is a time that the people at that time to take time after a harvest, after hard work, mm. to rest, time to rejoice for what he has done and thank him for what he has done. Mm. And then enter in his rest. But then we also have take time in ourselves to have relaxation. To find times so we can be restored. Amen. Mm. There's nothing wrong with relaxation. That he gives us where even in the earthly realm and stuff, when we learn to relax and become mm. to a calm spirit. And sometimes our relaxations might be reading a book or watching a football game or mm -hmm. something else, but to get our minds off of the work and just let your body be restored. Now, I talked about they, they dwelled in booths. Mm -hmm. And the booths were actually a tabernacle where they came to be able to thank him for what they blessed them with. Mm. And it's, it was a time that it was a time to rejoice and a time to, re to rest mm -hmm. and to relax, to be calm, to calm ourselves down so we can get where we can hear God more plainly. And I mentioned... Years ago, I wrote a poem, and this morning, I want us to recite this poem mm. out loud and follow me after I read it and put this in your spirit and use it as a prayer as you repeat this as, as I say it, because we are his living temple. Amen. We are his tabernacle because he tabernacles with us. Lord. And we are his sanctuary. When we come into the church here and we call it a sanctuary and we want the Holy Spirit to come here in this. Well, we as we are the sanctuary yes. and we want the Holy Spirit to come in us. Amen. So I want us to recite this as a prayer. It's a little lengthy, so I want you to say it out loud and I'll break it down to you. I am a sanctuary. I am a sanctuary. Christ dwells in me. Christ dwells in me. I am tabernacled with him. I am the temple of God. I am the temple of God. I am a noble kind of building. I am a noble kind of building. 
A building of God. A building of God. I have a strong foundation. I have a strong foundation. Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. I am a habitation of God. I am a habitation of God. Through the Spirit. A solemn place of worship. A solemn place of worship. I am dedicate, dedicated to God Almighty. I am dedicated to God Almighty. I'm a place of prayer. I'm a place of prayer. I'm a priest. I am a priest. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. By the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. I present my body. As a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. I sacrifice self daily. I sacrifice self daily. I am a constant witness. I am a constant witness. I have communion with God. I have communion with God. And He is my protection. And He is my protection. I am a sanctuary. I am a sanctuary. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Father. Thank you as we remember to be tabernacled with you. Help us to be able to rest in you, Father. But first, to rejoice for all that you have done and all that you have given us the strength to do in your name. Yes. And, Father, we thank you that you give us that rest. And you give us that relaxation, Father. Father, we thank you that you have tabernacled us and we become that holy temple and that sanctuary yes. that you dwell in us. Yes. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen. amen.